Good morning, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live on our Patreon channel. And uh, this video is going to actually probably go public before Thursday. And the reason I wanted to go public is because our Zoom meeting, <clears throat> www.stephenbenoon.com, uh, will be doing Thursday night and 8 p.m. Eastern as a general rule. I may have to go to 9 p.m. Eastern this week. I haven't fully decided yet. I have to be traveling again on Thursday, and I want to make sure that I'm not late for this. We're going to be going deeper into this subject on our Zoom meeting as well, and this is Behind the Veil. <clears throat> entering in Behind the Veil, you yourself entering in Behind the Veil, and uh, I wanted to share this on Patreon, though, because you guys really <clears throat> enjoy going deep. You enjoy really understanding and studying uh, scriptures in a way that most do not. And so I appreciate that, and I appreciate, too, your support of this ministry. And, uh, and, and listen, we can't do it without you. For the sake of you that are not here on Patreon, it's only a dollar a month. Uh, it's an easy way to support the ministry. Uh, if you prefer not to do that, though, and you would like to do a uh, one-time gift or, or however you want to do it, even monthly, you can go to our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org, and you can click right there on the donate link there, uh, and you can actually help support the broadcast that way. Um, but anyway, and, and two, when you actually become a subscriber on Patreon, you have access to all the content. Everything that people have been kind enough to help support now for the last, uh, what, year and a half, two years or something like that, you got access to everything from the very beginning. There's a lot of content in there. A lot of it's never made it here to the channel. So I want to get into this, though, right now, because this is really passionate and dear to my heart, the renting of the veil, and, uh, and, and <clears throat> really because... There's more to this than what meets the eye. And I'm going to share with you, this is from uh, the Gospel of Philip that was discovered in Egypt back in the, I think it's 1947. And uh, I do not say it is canon. I know there is debate about it. It's a very interesting book. But the historicity of it cannot be denied. I mean, it is an ancient document that was discovered, a Greek document, in fact. Uh, and, uh, and so historicity purposes is very important, but what, what caught my eye is something that Philip wrote in here about the veil. And then as I began to examine the scriptures, you see, because if it's not canonized, I have to really examine the scriptures to see, does this fit with the narrative that we have? Uh, and, and of course I'm very bold to go out and search. There's many uh, writings that are there that probably should be canonized, things that the Catholic Church removed, things that were removed in Nicaea, Rome, uh, and there's things that shouldn't be there that are out there. I, I get that, okay? So <clears throat> we don't know for sure what's what, but let's look at this. Uh, Philip wrote here, the mysteries of truth are revealed, though in type and in image. The bridal chamber, however, remains hidden it is the holy in the holy. The veil at first concealed how God controlled the creation. Did you just see that? The veil at first concealed how God controlled the creation. But when the veil was rent and things inside were revealed, this house will be left desolate. He's quoting Jesus, Matthew 23, or rather will be destroyed. And the whole inferior Godhead will flee from here. Whoa. Ho, 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 ho. Now, when he says the whole inferior Godhead will flee from here, to me, he's speaking of these priests that had put themselves in the place of God, kind of like the Pope of Rome is the vicar of Christ which vicarious filia dilia means instead of the Son of God, he takes his place. And the priest had done exactly that. So it's not like in behind the veil was, you know, maybe some statue of a false god. It's not so much implying that, 
but the whole inferior Godhead will flee from here. Now, <clears throat> is that contrary to Scripture? No. Matthew chapter 27, uh, as we'll read here just as to follow up on the renting of the veil. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent, and the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared to many. That is the scriptural reading of that tent, of that temp, of the veil being rent. Now, before I read about the desolate, you know, mind you, when it was, um, no, hang on one second, new, I want to go to Matthew 21, as I said, is there is is what Philip wrote in conjunction with what I just said to you? <clears throat> and the multitude said, "This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee." And Jesus went into the temple of God, cast out all of them that sold and bought in the temple, overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves, and said unto them, "It is written, My house shall be called the house of prayer." But you have made it a den of thieves. The blind and the lame came to him in the temple and he healed them. And of course he did it on the Sabbath day which really infuriated them. But notice what he said. My house shall be called the house of prayer. But you have made it a den of thieves. Not only does he say that, but we also have here Matthew chapter 23. And verse, well, I'll start with verse 11, or maybe verse 10. Neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. Now think about that. Don't be called master. Now, Philip said, and the whole inferior Godhead will flee from here. The Pharisaic dynasty. But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased, and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For you neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. They'd closed it off. Wouldn't, per wouldn't permit the children of God of knowing the truth. There's more that could be said on that. Maybe on the um, Zoom I'll, I'll speak about that. One of you Pharisees and scribes, because for you devour widows' houses and pretense make a long prayer, therefore you shall receive the greater damnation, right? But the thing is, they closed up the kingdom of heaven against men. And then actually, I think in the book of Thomas, he said they, they took the keys to the kingdom of heaven and hid them. Now, remember, Peter had the keys of the kingdom. And by the way, you could have the keys to the kingdom as well as I did that one broadcast. Let's back up over here where I was going to read at a moment ago. The graves were open. We got that there. Now, Philip also had made the statement that your house would be left desolate. He said destroyed. And Jesus prophesies that in Matthew chapter 23. Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. Well, let's, let's back up. Let's, let's start verse 33. You serpents, you generation of vipers, how can you escape the damnation of hell? Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them you shall kill and crucify. Some of them shall you scourge in your synagogues, persecute them from city to city, that upon you may come all the righteous bloodshed upon the earth from the blood of righteous Abel. He's going to Genesis, and we're going to go there too. And to the blood of Zechariah, the son of Barcaeus, whom you slew between the temple and the altar. 
But notice he called them serpents. A generation, a lineage of vipers. Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. Hmm. The righteous bloodshed. He was going to put it upon them. And he did. Romans came in, destroyed the temple. Killed them off, many of them, not all of them, but, you know, it was a major issue. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stones them which are sent unto you, how often I would have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathered her chickens under her wings, and you would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate, destroyed. For I say unto you, you shall not see me henceforth till you shall say, Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. In the Hebrew Matthew, blessed is our Savior, it notes. And as well, it mentions houses in the plural. So it's debatable. But if we look at what Philip said, he's talking about the temple. And I think also you could look at themselves because they never received the Holy Spirit. Why? They're, Jesus already said, you took, you hid, the, you, 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 you guard the kingdom that you, can't, you don't go in yourself and neither are you going to suffer anybody else to get in there. And they're still doing it to this day. They're blinding the people this day, taking you back into some Hebrew roots movement. And saying that the rabbis have all the knowledge and they're the ones who know more about Jesus and what we do and everything. The very blinded guides that Jesus called them and their ancestors are trying to get you convinced you need to go back to this. You're going to a new world order, all right. And I guarantee you, Donald Trump is going to take you there too. Wait till you hear the news broadcast that I did today. Yeah. He'll take you right into it. Evangelical teacher's going to take you right into it. You're all, you're going to go, you'll go right into a new world order under Israel. Oh, they might disarm Israel, like Mike says, around, from around the world. Sure, they might disarm Israel. That's what they want. We've turned our swords into plowshares. Now the law will come out of Jerusalem instead. Instead of us going and killing everybody in Gaza, you're going to overlook that. Yeah, think about it. All right, think about what's going on. So the house was left desolate. Now, what is it behind this veil... Those inferior God, God, the inferior Godhead would flee from there, right? Well, the inferior Godhead is a serpent Godhead that the Pharisees had installed in the temple. Now, no doubt the temple, as Jesus said, it was meant to be a house of prayer for all nations, not just Israel, for all nations. But you made it into a den of thieves. And not thieves of out there selling your, your, your little... Your little uh, uh, you know, it's funny. That's probably where they get the idea of thieves market today. You go to a little, uh, little um, um, what do you call it, like a uh, yard sale type thing, you know, where they, got, they call it a thieves market, you know. Jeez. Uh, I tell you what, it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. Right? Anyway, so these vipers, snakes. Now, here's the funny thing. You don't believe that's true? Let me just show you something. Let me, let me remind you. You remember here, Rabbi Ariel Tzedak? You remember what he said that the seraphim are? Well, let's take a look and let's remind ourselves what Rabbi Ariel Tzedak says about that. Gave them a full debriefing telepathically. Well, we still communicate telepathically with all of these other entities. There was a race of highly evolved reptilians who matured and evolved on earth and have since ascended and they presently serve Hashem, God and they are reptilian entities maybe evolved dinosaurs, who knows I don't think the dinosaurs are so 65 million years ago you notice he ago. said they, they serve Hashem um, and then he said God an evolved reptilian race they are referred to as in the Sefer Sirah, they're referred to as the Teli, T-E-L-I. I write all about this. He said they're referred to in the Seven Sirah, Teli, as the dragons, A-L-I, uh, or T-H-A. We know them by different names. The book of Daniel 
calls them the Irin, the watchers. The book of Isaiah refers to them as the Seraphim. Now, the Seraphim are the ones who are in the palace of God saying, Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh. What do you know? Holy, holy, holy. So this is what, this is what <laughs> Philip was talking about. So don't think that that is some kind of crazy writing there. He said, here, the veil at first concealed how God controlled the creation, but when the veil is rent and the things inside are revealed, this house will be left desolate, or rather will be destroyed, and the whole inferior Godhead will flee from here. But not in the holy of holies, for it will not be able to mix with the unmixed light and the flawless fullness but will be under the wings of the cross under its arms. This ark will be their salvation when the flood water surges over them. If some belong to the order of the priesthood, they will be able to go within the veil with the high priest. Now he's talking about Christ. You have the ability to go in with Christ and see what, what really is it? What is God doing? He is restoring back what was broken in Genesis. Now, granted, we would argue that God saw that the man was lonely and he, he wanted to have him a helpmate, things like that. But death set in once they were separated. See, the, the, the perfectness was when God, the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Vepak, it's not highlighted, I'll highlight it for you. Ve'ipak be'pa'av, right there. Nishmat, okay, that's okay. And he breathed into his nostrils, okay, that breath of what? Chaim. I've taught on this so doggone many times, it's not even funny. Chaim is life in the plural. Adam was just one guy. Ve'yahi Adam le'nefesh chaya. He becomes a living soul. That life there is singular feminine. Oh, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. That's the bride and the bridegroom. When you go into the veil, and that veil is not the veil of the temple in Jerusalem, but when you enter into Christ, into the interveil, you become one with him. He is the greater Adam. Okay? This is what John... This is what, Look, there's four places. If you looked up the word breathed in, uh, in the Bible, four places that it's mentioned. The first and the last one is Genesis here. And then, of course, in John chapter 20, verse 22. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Jesus came, he rent the veil of the temple to show you this is not where life is. But isn't it interesting? Isn't it interesting? Go back and look at this now, right? Um, let me make sure it's where it's at. No, that's not, not that one. I think it's this one here. Nope, 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 nope. Hang on, bear with me here. Right, when you made it a den of thieves... Um, maybe maybe it is here. Let me. I'm just trying to figure out which which one that I know this would be at. Yeah, here it is. I'm sorry. It was actually right here in Matthew 23 when he calls them serpents, generation of vipers. And then he says, Upon you may come all the righteous bloodshed upon the earth from the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, son of Barcaius. You see, he had to take it all the way back to Genesis. Because this is where everything went wrong. Cain would have never killed Abel had there not been a separation. And Christ restores that back. And you go in behind the veil with him into the Holy of Holies. He is the true high priest. 
And when you are truly in behind the veil with him and truly have received of his life, his Holy Spirit within you, you are clothed in light, you are clothed in his righteousness and nothing, nothing will prevent you from being with him on the other side. That is, in a nutshell, what I wanted to share with you now. And this Thursday, we're going to go even deeper on our Zoom. www.stevenstevenbenun.com. And I apologize I did not make this last one here. So much is happening right now. It's not even funny. So, but um, I hope you can join us and God bless you.